Right, so round two today, we're back down at MRC Tunin. I've put about 650 miles on the clutch now, so it should be nicely bedded in. But yeah, we're gonna be fitting the hybrid turbo today and the operated high pressure fuel pump internals as well. But yeah, let's head inside because it's freezing out here. Right, so a bit of deja vu, GTI is back on the ramp. We're here in this workspace again. This is the main feature, Venom 550 hybrid turbo. Now this is based on an IS38. Being a regular GTI, it has the IS20 on it. You can get the IS38 if you've got a Golf R, that comes with it standard. Or if you've got a GTI Club Sport, or a Cupra, or an S3. So yeah, that is an upgrade in itself, but we've gone one step further. Now I did head over to Venom Turbos a few months ago to get some clips of all the process and a more detailed explanation of what goes into making this thing. So I'll run those now and then I'll explain to you what else we've got here. Right, so we're here with Paul from Venom Turbos. We're gonna give you guys an explanation of what basically makes a Venom 550 hybrid turbo. We've got a blown IS38 here and we've got a sort of exploded version of a Venom 550 and here's the turbo that we are going to be putting on the GTI. But I'll let Paul take it away. Yeah, so like you just said then, so you've got a stock, completely stock IS38 which has, which has failed. There's nothing new, it's well documented that they're not the strongest of turbos by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, so then we, when we set about yep. doing it, we basically took them apart, realised what the weak components were, why they were failing, etc, etc, etc. And the first thing that came to mind was, in every turbo, you've got the thrust bed and you've got your thrust system. So that's your thrust washer. That sits on there. And you can clearly see that it's started to dig in. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And then what, if that fails, then that, that allows your turbo to move along mm -hmm. that way. So it's, it gets end flow. If that does happen, and you can clearly see that it has happened, yep. but it's picked up on the yeah. outer edge of the wheels it just basically digs into there mm. and it sends it out of balance so that's mm. one weak component but then what you're left with potentially it's all right upgrading all this but if you're left with a standard journal bed and of that size mm -hmm. you can clearly see that it's got movement on it there and you can clearly yeah. see that it's actually Digged dug in, in there already so yes upgrading that your thrust system is all well and good mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. You're potentially left with your yeah. standard journal bed, so then we... So the Venom 550 is a ball bearing turbo. It turbos. is, yeah. yeah, and that's what we decided. We There's no way that we were going to basically supply a turbo with that journal bed in, on this MQB platform, mm -hmm. running at 2.1, 2, 2, 2 2.2 and above. Yeah. Then you move on to the ball bearing, which, mm -hmm. like I say, mine's running at 2.5 bar. Yeah, and your own car with the, the full scale build on it is running what, around 590 horsepower, isn't it? Yeah. That's with yeah. meth, on 99 run with meth. meth. Completely stock, Venom 550, mm -hmm. yeah, and then it's um, with your turbine wheels as well. Yeah, noticeable. Your size of the wheels determines what kind of power you want to run at, at X boost pressure, mm -hmm. yeah, and then once you've done that, then you've just got to think, think about, right, what design of wheel do I want? Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. all about flow, it's all about efficiency. So yeah. no wheel, if you've got two wheels exactly the same size, if they had a different design, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that they're gonna flow as well. Of course, yeah. And basically the fundamentals of a hybrid turbo is that all this outer casing, for those of you who are not too technical, basically stays the same. Mm. The internals are upgraded. So this from far will probably look like a normal IS38 to anyone else if another IS38 was placed here. It's what's inside that's Even changed. Even to insurers company, it looks exactly the same as well. <laughs> that's the main thing, yes. So that's another little benefit for you folks. We've got the Venom 400, which is a completely stock size IS38, but taken all these, these weak components out yeah. and converted it to ball bearing. Mm -hmm. So that's Venom 400. So that's designed to run stage one, a safe stage one and a stage two. Yes. You've got the Venom 460, um, then you've got the Venom 500, and then you've got this one. The other thing as well, Hamza, this, what IHI have done, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like a ceramic Teflon insert. Right. Yeah. Um, and what it's designed to do, it's designed to compress next to your compressor wheel at different air temperatures. Mm -hmm. Right. So to get the wheel very, very close. So you could argue it's a good design, but it's flawed as well because it does come apart. So what we mm -hmm. do, we machine that out. So to prevent that from failing, we machine that out, we weld uh, an aluminium sleeve in there, mm -hmm. yeah, press an aluminium sleeve in, weld it, and then machine to whatever wheel size. Because we've converted it to ball bearing, what we could have done, or what, what can be done, but it's a flawed design if you like, you could machine out all this here to take, so that sits in there, Yeah. right? But what you'd have to do then, because all this would open up then, 
it wouldn't be 360 degrees all the way around. So what you'd have to do then, you'd have to sleeve it. Right. Yeah. So then that would then sit in your sleeve, if you like. But we, we just went one step further. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. So mm -hmm. we've got the uh, a full bearing housing machined, cast, done, you name it. There's nothing weak on, Every... these, on these turbos at all. Yeah, cause... There was, but there certainly isn't now. Yeah, because IS-38 has just got that. I mean, compared to like the previous platform, KO4, which I'm very familiar with, you never really heard of KO4s going that much. Strong turbo, uh, good with, flowing turbos, good turbos. Yeah. Whereas with IS-38, I mean, they've revised it how many times, and it still goes wrong. I'm about dash 15 now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it, people are checking which revision they've got, but it's still going to go at some point. Yeah. Well, I've personally never seen a Benham 550 on a GTI, so yeah. I'm as interested as you, Amza. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. gonna be good seeing it on the IS-20 block car, so. Should be good fun, should be good fun. Now in addition to the turbo, you do need to upgrade your high pressure fuel pump. So I've gone for a set of Autotech internals. This is essential, so we're gonna be fitting that as well today. And in addition to that, I've got a larger resonator. Now if you've been watching the videos, you'll know that a few months ago, I fitted a full exhaust from the guys at Cobra Sport. Now it is resonated and it has got a back box, but I've found it's a bit droney, so they've gone ahead and made me a custom one that's a bit larger. It's gonna fit that and hopefully it tones down the noise. So back again with Dean. Hello. So the plan for today is going to remove the IS-20 and fit the Venom is a hybrid. Generally, is it a fiddly job on these things? They're not great. Um, there's quite a bit down the back that you need to get to mm -hmm. um, underneath lines and pipes and stuff. So yeah, take a little while. They do come out the top, so they're not too bad. Yeah, because I mean, I'm mostly familiar with the KO4 where it's quite sunk down below behind the mm -hmm. block. Whereas this, you look at it, you think, oh, the turbo's right there, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few bolts that are probably a bit obscured. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a couple of nice ones that we'll, we'll find out along the way. We've got a uh, trusty bit of farm here. Another EA AAA turning on. What's your thoughts on the GTI so far then, Doug? A bit of a shed or...? Is he, how much swearing has there been? Not too much so far, to well, be fair to Dean. Actually, to no, he's, that, he's saying it's the easiest Mark 7 he's worked on. Has it been off before? Um, from what Dean was saying, I don't think it's been off. The okay. state of these nuts. If someone has taken it off and put it back on, you would not want to use these again. Yeah. It's usually the brace bar that's got seized. Yeah, bolts. straight off. Ah, okay. I suppose it could all end up changing in the next second or so. You never know. Yeah, spoken too soon. Yeah, spoken too soon. Can't be a B7. Loads of ideas here as usual. Big beast of a C7 as well. Right, so whilst Dean is there enjoying himself, I thought I'll show you this masterpiece of a car out here so now this thing whilst it may just look like a blue mark 7r which in itself is quite rare i don't really see this color too often this is actually mrc's own car that they used to go to events it's actually got a five cylinder swap yeah small brakes the full works got these lightweight recaros in there just love how it looks like a standard golf r but it's got around a thousand horsepower crazy thing and just in the nick of time the is 20 is coming out what are we saying then dean condition yeah, pretty wise good. it's pretty good there's not not really any play in the um, the compressor wheel at all. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like it's still connected to the uh, the hot side, so that's good. And that thing's yeah. been run at stage one for an unknown period of time, and then yeah. for the last fifteen hundred miles with, since I've had it. So yeah, so whatever abuse it has taken, it survived pretty well. Now we have got to swap over a few things, haven't we? Yeah. So the way I usually do it, pull the turbo off with all the oil um, feed return pipes and everything. Get those changed over onto the new unit. Yeah. Um, DV, put the, the muffler in there. Get that all on the new unit and then chuck it all back in. Um, it's a lot easier than trying to get it all in when it's in the car. Now, there's one other thing that we want to show you. So this is part of the forge intake pipe kit. I'll see the silicon hose attaches onto here. This is totally fine for a standard turbo, but we've noticed that it tapers in quite a bit. And on the operated Venom turbo, you don't really want to have this taper because you're essentially losing Airflow there. The metal adapter for the silicon hose goes in yep. and is pretty close to the exact size of the inlet of the turbo here. Yeah, this ridge here. On all the hybrids, mm -hmm. it's a lot larger because the compressor wheel inducer is larger. Mm -hmm. So this is all machined out. The trouble is if you use this, you've yeah. just put a restrictor yeah, you lose on the all. nose of the turbo. So that's with the forge one. That's the forge one. And this is the Turbo Technics. Turbo Technics one just mm -hmm. tapers down to the right diameter when you put it in there. Yeah, just a smooth airflow for that, as you can see. Are we using the example of a rally car? Would they have a restrictor on them? Yeah, they are probably a lot smaller than this restrictor's 
on the, the nose of the turbo and mm -hmm. that just limits peak power. Yeah. So you don't want to artificially put that yeah. on a turbo to limit your power when you're trying to get yeah. everything to work as efficiently as possible. Yeah. It's not good for a turbo to have to suck in through a restriction because it mm -hmm. pulls the whole shaft forward. Yeah, we definitely make a good progress. That took about an hour to get the old turbo off, so not too bad. Like I said, I wasn't going to show like a full DIY process today because I don't want to get in the way too much. I see Dean's cracking on with the task in hand, so yes. they want to be like, oh, how do you get that bolt out? How do you get this bolt out? I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials. And yeah, it's winter now, so I don't think any of you folks will be doing DIY outside. And there we have it, the Venom 550's all been fitted up. Next part of the process, Dean, is we're going to fit the Autotech internals. Yep, so I've left all that out just to ease of getting to the pumps. We'll pull the pump out. Yeah. Um, take that out to the bench and then we can pull the internals out, put the uprated ones in yeah. and then fit that back on and we're pretty much ready to go. Have you had enough of me putting the camera in your face today, Dean? It's been a no, few hours. You could just come back tomorrow and do it again. That yeah, be <laughs> it's been a long day. Right, so we've got the area all nice and clean. We're going to start disassembling the pump. Yep. Okay. So you get your um, get your bearing puller in here. Yeah. Just clamps the spring up, and then what you have to do is just tap out the um, the central piston out. That's with the specialist tool over there. That's with the uh, specialist Thor tool. Okay. That we the, use. the Thor hammer. <laughs> we'll just show that. Look at the logo on that. See, we're joking about it's a Thor hammer. <laughs> And that's with a punch then? Yeah, so that's the collet that holds it on, it's pressed on. Right, okay. So you can either tap it out, you can press it out, and that takes your spring away and leaves you with just your pump body and your piston inside. Get it back in with the body and the vise just to hold it nice. Yeah. And that's where the specialist tool comes in. Okay, so you're going to need one of those if you are going to be planning on doing this yourself. You can't just get away with not using that. No, you definitely need that. Um, unless you've got a massive Allen key and you want to drill a big hole in it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's made out of alleys, so you have to be careful, you have to hold it down in place. Okay. It can be quite tight sometimes. So yeah, that's your fuel pump internals, the stock ones. So that's your auto tech replacements. You want to keep all this really nice and clean as it goes in. Any metal filings or any debris in there and it's going to completely ruin your pump. Precision stuff, isn't it, Dean? Precision stuff. As precision as you can get. <laughs> no messing around. <laughs> it's, it's that well machined that the slightest of angles it will get stuck. Oh, okay. So, and that's what give that that's what increases. Yeah. The pressure is, is the fact that it is so well machined. This goes back in carefully so you don't damage the seal. So, is there any specific torque rating with this at all, or? This you just want to go as tight as you can get because you can't. There's no way of really of nicely getting the torque wrench on there. This is the fun bit. So how do you secure that back in? Is it like a... So that's where your collets come in. Right. So there is a little uh, little groove machined out of the piston in the middle there. That drops in there. And then you have to press this down. Yeah. And then drop the collets in. Okay, around this. So it's around two different there. halves, isn't it? Yeah, so you've got one half goes in that side and then the other half obviously on the other side. Yep. And then there's a little tiny recess in there. And that's what holds it against the piston. Yeah, every day is a school day. I learned something today as well. I got to see it fully being done bit by bit. The plan now is we're going to get the first start up. Got a bit of residue there burning yeah. off. You get a bit of smoke coming out the back. It's mainly machining oil. Yep. And where they've cleaned it afterwards from the manufacturing. That burns off after a little while. Right, so it's the next morning. GTI is up in the air. Obviously, turbo and high pressure fuel pumps all done. Currently the oil is being drained out because it's always good to do an oil change when you change your turbo but I thought I'd show you the difference in resonator size compared to the original one. That was the original resonator that I put on the uh, car a while back so you can see it's not actually doing much resonating I don't think with that size but this one seems to be almost similar length to the OEM one. The OEM one's like a big triangular box isn't it? So yeah hopefully it does the job. I say the cold start is slightly different, but the main issue was drone and motorway speeds. I wasn't too fussed when you're like at lower speeds or at high RPM. But yeah, oil chain's all done. It still works then, Dean. Still works. 
go forwards and backwards. So yeah, good. it does the job, innit? It does the job. But yeah, I think this is a good place to end today's video. The next stage is for the GTI to head over to the Dino Cell. Not too sure what day that's going to be, so yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on Instagram most likely. I'll put that on the screen now. Make sure you drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for a lot more content to come. And make sure you check out MRC Tuning and also Venom Hybrid Turbos if you want to do like a similar setup to this. And yeah, I'm taking predictions down below of what power you think this thing's going to make. But yeah, I'll see you in a few days' time.